All right, so now let's get our pulses per revolution set up. There's lots of different possible options that you have here, depending on what your engine is and what your ignition system is, and whether it's a four-stroke engine or a two-stroke engine. So we'll just try to cover uh, both of those here. Um, and in general, uh, the two-stroke engine, you know, mo most of these numbers here are for four-stroke engines. So if you have a two-stroke engine, you'll just multiply by two. All right, so we'll start with engines that have distributors. Um, so for a four-stroke engine with a distributor, you'll just end up dividing the number of cylinders you have by two. So an eight-cylinder uh, engine, you would put in four. For a six-cylinder, you'd put in three, et cetera, et cetera. And if you have a two-stroke engine, you would just put in the number of cylinders. So if you have a four-cylinder, you'd put four. Two-cylinder, you'd put two, et cetera. Uh, sometime around the, the late 80s, maybe mid 80s, uh, I don't recall, um, the automakers started moving towards distributorless ignition systems. And so basically, you don't have a distributor then. There's some kind of a uh, crank or um, camshaft sensor, and then it just picks up um, the engine rotations. And then usually they had uh, coil packs, and oftentimes the coil pack would serve as two cylinders. So that would be called wasted spark. If you have one, if you have half the number of coil packs as you do cylinders, you have a wasted spark system. And what that means is that the coil pack is going to fire uh, once per revolution, and so on each cylinder, it's going to fire both on the compression stroke and the exhaust stroke, uh, because one coil pack will be kind of branched off into two cylinders. And there's no problem firing on the exhaust stroke, since the all the gases have pretty much been combusted, as far as they're going to in the cylinder anyway. Uh, and so in that case, um, those coil packs may require an adapter to read properly. You can try it without, uh, similarly, similarly to connecting to the negative terminal on a points or Pertronics type of system. Um, you can try it and see if it, if it doesn't work or if strange things happen, you probably need a, an adapter. And then if you have an adapter and you adapt it to one coil, then the PPR should be one because you're gonna get one, uh, every revolution one of the cylinders is gonna be firing. Okay, so then later on, after this uh, shared coil pack uh, thing, a lot of new cars now have the coil on plug or coil near plug types of ignitions. So in that case, every cylinder has its own coil. Um, so it may either be installed like right into the valve cover and just kind of right onto the spark plug, that's the coil on plug, or maybe a plug uh, nearby, maybe it's mounted on top of the valve cover or uh, somewhere um, remotely and then there's a high tension um, by high, ten high voltage wire to the spark plug. Uh, but in either case, you have one plug per cylinder and on those, you're pretty much always going to need an adapter just like uh, most tachometers would need an adapter con to connect to those, just the way the ECU pulses the, um, the power to them. It's not easy to pick up without a a specialized adapter and so once you get that adapter in place um, and you get it connected if you're if you're hooked up to one coil then your pulses per revolution is going to be 0 0.5 regardless of however many cylinders you have but if you're connected to a branch a wire that branches out into multiple coils uh, which is a common you'll have like one feed wire and it goes out to multiple coils and then the the ECU will just kind of individually cut the ground to them then you would just um, take the number of coils that you have in the branch times 0 0.5. So maybe you have one main wire that goes to four coils. If you have a V8 engine, uh, some of them do this. Yeah. Depending on where you're hooking up in the harness, if you're not hooking up near the coils, it might be just supplying half of them, and that would be this case. And if you can find a way to do that, that's actually better because you'll get uh, more RPM information faster. If you have more pulses per revolution, uh, the way that the system determines RPM is pretty much determining how much time passes between the pulses, so you get faster uh, information updates. Um, although it's not really going to cause you a problem at 0 0.5, you just on your graphs may see a little bit of a, a stair step look. Okay, so uh, set this up in your app, and then start your engine and, and look at the chart on the app, on the, the chart page. And with the engine idling, you can verify what the RPM reading is at the top right. There's, it should be reading the RPM for you. And if it looks correct, um, then you're all set. But if it looks off, it's going to be off by some multiple uh, likely. So try different PPR settings until you find one that, that matches up pretty well. Um, it's, it's probably something like you didn't realize you had wasted spark. You thought it was something else. 
and so it's either double or half the number it should be. But uh, in general, a higher number that you set for the PPR is going to make the RPM read lower and vice okay. versa. So uh, give it a shot. If you have any problems, uh, feel free to contact us at support at fastlaneinnovations.com and we'll help you out as quickly as possible and get you up and running. Thanks and have fun.